welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking all about commissions and I'm going to be talking you through some tips and tricks and steps of how to take on commissions as an artist. Maybe you're a newbie artist or you're an artist and want to start taking on commissions and how I got started. So let's just get straight into it shall we? So I've actually made a little list of all the things that I think are really important when you're taking on commissions as an artist. I'm going to be primarily talking B2C, which means business to consumer or business to client or business to customer, whatever. Uh, you primarily as a freelancer are technically the business. These kind of apply very roughly to things like logos, portraits and stuff like that, but I'm going to be sharing my experience based on logos and portraits, which is actually what started my business in the first place. And and honestly, it helped me fund a lot of new products that I got for catnip. In fact, it helped me fund every single product that was the base of catnip, the first few mugs, the first few enamel pins, all came from my commissions and portraits. And that is how I got started. So back in 2015, I opened a Facebook page called Catnip and I then just put out on Facebook that I was offering custom portraits of people in my then style, uh, which is completely completely dramatically changed since then. I'll insert some photos so you guys can see the different ones. And I'm gonna kind of be talking you through what I learned during this process. I've been doing them for around five years now. I'm still taking on commissions very, very rarely, but I still do take on the odd commission here and there. And this is basically what I've learned and the steps that I think are really important to take if you're considering selling portraits or doing commissions. I'm gonna just talk about illustrations for now, and just as an example, but you can can reinsert this with logo or whatever you want. So the first one is pricing. Now this will be quite variable depending on things like how long the illustration is going to take, your skill level and your competition in your field that you want to take on board. So first of all let's talk about the time it's going to take you to illustrate something. So you need to factor in how long it's going to take you to complete an illustration. Now not only do you have to factor in how long it's going to take to complete an illustration but you also need to factor in the time it's going to take to communicate with the client so all those emails and times you have to go backwards and forth you have to factor that into account as well often the case you don't just send off a file and they're happy with it there is a lot of back and forward between your clients which we'll go into a little bit more in detail later on you definitely have to take time into consideration how much you would like to be paid per hour and make sure you are getting enough to cover the cost because someone who is a realism portrait artist maybe takes what 10 12 13 hours on a portrait and they would charge considerably more maybe we're talking 200 300 400 plus pounds to those who maybe only take one to two hours to do a portrait like myself my portraits take around one to two hours so I price that accordingly based on what I wanted to be paid per hour now not all artists base the prices according to the hourly rate but if you're a beginner it's a pretty good place to start to get you off the ground running. This is actually the formula I used to ensure I was earning enough money to make the whole business transaction worthwhile. Which rolls into the skill level. So you want to be pricing based on your skill level. What I charge now is considerably different to what I've charged in the very early stages. I'll try and find an example of one of my old price lists that I used to have up. So here's my 2016 price list. As you can see, I used to break it down depending on how many characters characters were in the actual illustration and I offered multiple styles. Now more on that in a little bit. And how I actually came across this price list is I actually looked at my competition. So I looked on Etsy, which is where I wanted to sell, but I didn't have an Etsy store at this point. I was primarily taking orders through Facebook. I looked at artists who were very similar in style to me, or maybe had a similar sort of technique that I applied to my art style. Do some market research on people who are in a similar skill set to you and price your work accordingly. Now you want to make sure that you're not 
pricing too little. Not only does this actually hurt the artist community by watering down the amount people are willing to pay, but it also will damage you in the long run. You're dedicating your time, your skills and your effort to these portraits, so make sure you're offering a fair price point. And I also adjusted this over time, so I started in 2015, then I would reevaluate the cost each year or each quarter, and that's how I got started as a beginner artist. Now, as my skill set developed and I grew an audience and I became a little bit more in demand, I hate saying that, it feels really cringy saying it, but it was true, I had to really reevaluate my current commission prices. So those are all things you need to take in mind. So write a bullet point down, see how long it takes you to do an illustration. Maybe you could test it out on your friend or your family. I used my friend's daughter for the first ever picture that I used on catnip and I did it completely for free because I wanted to test out how I was going to format it and how it was going to look and I wanted to see how long it would take me to do. Definitely write down a list and make it clear how long it's going to take, how much you want to get paid for an hour and take your skill set into account and also have a look at your competition and do some market research in your area as well. Next up I want to talk about styles. So styles, I'm not just talking about art styles here, I actually offered a variant of different styles on my store. Now I say styles but what I actually mean is different techniques that were quicker for me. So I began introducing a sketch style as I call it, I really hope I can find a picture for you guys and it was a more a uh, quick way of illustrating and I really tried to streamline it. So my first illustrations were heavily rendered, I used to use shadows and it used to take a long time to finish and complete from start to finish. So then I decided to offer different options that would be a quicker way of illustrating which also meant I could offer a cheaper option for my audience. So I actually offered what was called a sketch style. Now this was extremely popular and it started at £25. Yeah it worked really really well because then it meant I was a lot quicker doing illustrations but you also have to bear in mind how many illustrations you want to illustrate during a day not everyone wants to do like 10 portraits a day some ideas for you guys you could offer a range of different products from sketches maybe you just want to offer the line art a monotone illustration something like a flat color illustration where you don't have to go in with heavy shading and then finally a fully rendered piece this would usually be the ultimate price point and probably the illustration that would cost the most sometimes people just really want a piece of original work from the artist and they don't have the budget to pay the full rendered cost is a fantastic way to offer your customers a piece of your artwork for a cheaper price than what your fully rendered artwork would be. Next up I want to talk about timelines and time frames. How long is it going to take you realistically to do it? You really need to take this into consideration. I know I said this in the pricing earlier. Now, don't worry if you get it wrong the first time. I'm sure plenty of freelancers have been there where they've took on a project and it's took a lot longer than what they thought it was going to take and they've dramatically underpriced. I've totally been in that boat before and underestimated the amount of time it was going to take. You don't know how fussy the client might be or particular, maybe they want a particular look and you feel like like you're not getting it but you need to take that timeline into consideration how realistically how many portraits can you get out or illustrations or freelance work can you take and not just physically but mentally how many can you take because it can be pretty draining just getting up and illustrating from start to finish and let the client know how long that is going to take and add a little buffer in there for example for the children's book that I illustrated I actually had a buffer of around two months and that was a 36 page illustration book with a front cover so it would give me a little bit of leeway. You have to remember there's other projects going on. You normally don't just have one project and that's it as a freelancer. There's normally other things going on. Here you can see an example of one of my generic custom portrait timelines during a non-busy period. After the initial briefing with the client, say it's a normal generic two-person custom portrait, I will then allow a week to get the sketch over to them and I'll say it takes between five to seven working days to receive the sketch. Then once they're happy with the sketch and I've sent that over to them and we've communicated, I'll then communicate again and say that it will take roughly between seven to ten working days for the final piece. I'll then 
then email them again the final piece once it's all complete in week three make any minor adjustments during this time and then once they're happy it will be a delivery but i'll let the client know from the very start that it will take roughly around a three week process now in reality it may only take two weeks or one week but underestimating is a lot better than overestimating and that means the client has expectations and you can meet them very comfortably and even wow them with the expectation of delivering even sooner so that's usually what i work on three weeks sometimes a client will need it for a rush job in that case that often takes priority and you can charge an extra quick service fee on top of that if that is something you need to do for your client maybe they've got a wedding coming up and they've just seen you work and they think it's perfect for example as a wedding portrait and they want to commission you to paint it but you only have perhaps a week and a half to do it you will have to dedicate two days or a day painting that for them and have constant communication with that person number four to take into consideration is payment how are you going to accept payment off your client when i first started out I didn't have an e-commerce store or Etsy store ready for my clients to pay me so I just used to advertise on Facebook and send them over PayPal invoices so you can use invoicing like the PayPal service or you could use normal invoices with your bank details on it there's also options like obviously e-commerce Etsy taking direct debits online or it could be in the form of good old-fashioned cold hard cash this could be because you're at a convention and you're taking commissions over the table or you could be doing a commission for family and friends and if you're going to be doing anything like a deposit so some artists will take a fraction or half of the deposit will finalize payment after the design is fully finished I personally have done this in a few scenarios one was when I first did my children's book illustration it was given to me in installments other scenarios might include it being a large sum of money so they might want to take 50 50% now and 50% when they're happy and I would use a proofing watermark over the top if you're going to do it that way so that then they can make the final payment and you can give them the full finished piece without any watercolours or watermarks over the top. And finally, a business to business transaction. So say for example, a logo design, I would take 50% payment up front and then 50% payment at the end. So that is something to take into consideration when you are thinking about payment. Another important thing is communication. How are you going to communicate with your client? How does your client expect you to communicate with them? Maybe you could set up a Skype call or a Zoom call if it's a bigger client. If it's just a smaller client who's offering a portrait, Maybe it's via email or Etsy messages. You need to set up a form of communication and let your client know that is how you're going to be in touch with them to send them over the sketches and the proofs and stuff like that, which brings me on to my next point, which is proofing. So I often send proofs or sketches to my customer before the final piece. So most commissions will go like this. You'll get a brief off the client. It could be just a portrait of two people with a specific outfit on. You'll get all the details, get the eye colors, get the hair colors, get all the little details that you need to be included in the portrait. And then you'll go on to sketch it. You don't want to just go out full blown and fully render it and spend hours on a piece without first getting their approval of the sketch first because honestly it will hurt you so much if you send them over a final piece that you've just spent four hours on and they're like oh, I really don't like how we're stood or I really don't like this and you have to change the complete illustration that's a big no-no for me personally I send a sketch when they're happy with the sketch or maybe I'll make some adjustments that's when the major adjustments can happen so the sketching phase is a great time to allow for major adjustments to the piece in the composition after that has been approved by the client only then minor adjustments can be made usually during the coloring phase like repositioning of small details like the eyes or minor color change that's how I personally operate and I found it works really well for me you do not want to be fully rendering an illustration without the approval of your client first honestly do not get stung with this there is nothing worse than spending hours and hours and hours rendering a final piece without first getting
getting their approval of a sketch. Next up, I want to be talking about advertising and marketing. How are you going to promote selling these portraits? For me, it was just through Facebook. I shared it with my friends and family that I had over on Facebook, and I got my first ever commission from a friend of a friend from of a friend who I didn't really know at the time. And I was like, oh my gosh, I made my first sale within a few days. And I just kind of was thrown in at the deep end there. At that point, I didn't even have a printer. And I used the money that I made off that commission to buy a printer. Figure out how you're going to advertise and get your name out there and how are people going to find you and how are they going to know about your amazing artwork. Social media is probably the first thing that comes to many people's minds, especially as an artist. It's a great free organic way of reaching a lot of people and I would definitely utilise that to your ability. Next thing I want to talk about is alterations. So as we were saying about proofing, you need to factor in the costs of alterations. Now sometimes you will get a client who is maybe a little bit more particular <laughs> than your other clients and everyone has them don't worry it, it's sometimes you're not seeing eye to eye or maybe they just keep changing the mind a way to avoid this is you could add in your policy a maximum amount of alterations your client is allowed to use and if they exceed that number you can simply add it to the bill or the invoice just make sure you're really transparent with your client or your customer so that they know fully what they're getting into and know the costs of added alterations or maybe if they want to change something last minute or they've had another idea you can say well because we've gone past a certain stage it would be an extra certain amount to your bill and see what they say about it just make sure you remain transparent and have open communication with your customer i haven't charged for alterations i think i charged once actually because they're just complete and it was a logo design they completely kept changing the style and design of what they wanted and it, we really weren't seeing eye to eye on the same level we managed to get there in the end and the client was very very happy uh but i just said listen it's going to be an extra cost because you already approved the sketch and i, I started doing it till the full render and now you want to change it i'm going to have to unfortunately charge you for that i hope that's okay obviously be very courteous very polite and use the best customer service skills possible i always try and make my clients the happiest that can be and really really happy with their pieces for portraits and stuff to be honest I've never really had any issues. The final thing that I want to talk about, which is after all the alterations, the proofing, etc., is your refund policy. Are you going to offer refunds to people? This is going to a business sense as a freelancer. They need to know your policy. For me, I have a strict no returns policy on custom illustrations because I'm working with the client to create that custom illustration themselves. So they have to approve of what they've seen. They can't make the whole approval from sketch to the end result and then ask for a refund that's not how it works in the art world and I have a policy just saying that I don't accept refunds on custom orders and I'm sure a lot of people probably have this as well. Now most of my work is very small scale like custom portraits and Etsy already has like an online resource where you just like tick your refund policy on custom orders and it already puts it in on your shop manager page uh, but things like for a bigger contract maybe if you're doing a book illustration a logo design or anything like that something like a contract where you're being transparent about your refund policy can be a great way to protect both you and the client. If a customer really really isn't happy and you can't seem to get to the end of the project you might just want to call it quits and give them a partial refund back. This has never happened to me but I have heard it happen to other artists but sometimes you're just not meeting eye to eye with your client. Perhaps it's logo design and you're really not bonding well or your style is not working well with your client needs reconsider offering a partial refund a lot of time clients are very very understanding very very kind very very helpful especially when you're working more with customers rather than businesses business to business can be a little bit more colder and a little bit more um business like that's why I personally love reaching out with my customers or my audience and I like working with them because it's a much more pleasant interaction and you've made it to the final point well done you it's just about the delivery now and how the customer is expecting their product is it going to be prints is it going to be a digital only file if so what file formats are you going to send across and what file formats are you going to sell or is it another thing I used to sell pin banners with illustrations on 
and then also you have to just consider shipping how you're going to ship it and your shipping tools and materials your envelopes etc but that is the final step so that's pretty much all my tips for now for the portraits but there is something that i really want to say just before we end this video which i think is extremely important and that is your worth now i know as an artist especially as a beginner you never feel good enough heck i still feel like this now after being in kind of the trade for five years i feel like i'm still not good enough i look at some illustrators and i think i can't even believe that i've managed to build a business with my style when there's illustrators like that out there they are literally how do they even draw like that they can actually draw hands i cannot draw hands to save my life but you have to remember that everyone has their own usp aka unique selling point you can bring something unique to the table everyone is different maybe it's your customer service which is your unique selling point maybe it's the way you draw eyes everyone has something unique to bring to this table so never never forget that and obviously as you develop with time you'll get better and better like I said and you seen earlier on in the video my style has changed considerably but I did not let that hold me back I did not have a distinct illustration style I just learned it as I went along and made money while I could in the meantime because some people are gonna like that style that I had then and I'll maybe cringe over it a little bit because it's my older style but that helped me get to where I am today and that's another thing you need to remember is that every artist and illustrator started from scratch and remember that art is subjective as well find your own voice find your own style and that comes through practice and just getting straight to it and stop putting it off if you've been putting it off for a long time. I really hope you found this video helpful. It's been in my planned videos for so long. I did a little list of everything that I wanted to do for this video in my sketchbook and even how I was going to do the titles and everything. I hope you did find it helpful and don't forget to give it a like if you did. Subscribe if you're not already. Oh my god, I sound like an official YouTuber when I say that but <laughs> thank you guys so so much for watching. Alright then, I'll see you very very soon. Alright then, I love you. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.